What's up people, Joe DeSanto here. Got another Quicken tutorial video for you. In this video, we are going to look at using category groups in your reporting to help you refine your reporting to uh, be the way that you would like to see your information displayed um, that helps you understand it as quickly and easily as possible. So category groups can help you do that and this will walk you through it. I'm Joe DeSanto, by the way. I'm an independent CFO and business consultant. I actually spent most of my career in Los Angeles building a few multi-million dollar businesses and I've since semi-retired and now I help other uh, businesses and individuals manage their money and plan better for their future. So if you're interested in small business, personal finance, and real estate advice, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Hey, thanks for joining me in this video. So as I mentioned in the open, this is going to be specifically showing you how to use category groups to customize your reports in a specific way. If you're coming to this video blind, you might want to go watch my intro to reporting video, which I think kind of is a good lead into this. I start talking about category groups in there. Um, quick recap of the category group thing. So what I have up here is one of my, you know, a basic report that I have that is being displayed using category groups. And the category group is this gray bar up here. Now the standard report that if you pull like a cash a cash flow report or a cash what do they call it? They call it uh, yeah the cash flow report. Um, it's going to likely be showing you the, the organizational display of income and expense. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, it actually might be showing you the uh, organizational display of cash flow, which is basically going to show you an inflows and outflows kind of uh, organization. That might be fine for you, but as I mentioned in that previous video, I really like to see my information organized sort of in a chain of events kind of a way. So I use category groups uh, to make that happen. And as you can see, what changed there was instead of just seeing inflows and outflows, the most high level organization is done by my groups, which is business activity, then investment income, then personal income, then tax, then personal expense, then real estate, all the way down to an overall total. And the reason I like to look at it that way is because it, this mirrors the way the money flows in my life. Like it comes into my business, I spend some money there, I have a net left over, which goes to kind of like my personal, you know, spendable money. From there I have investment income that I kind of throw into the pot. Uh, from there I have some additional personal income that I sort of throw into the pot. From there, there's taxes that come out. You know, I pay most of my taxes towards the end of the year, so I've, I've paid in some tax through the paycheck that I, you know, annual paycheck I gave myself out of my business. I got to pay more, obviously, uh, when I file my tax return. And then um, I have all my personal expenses, and then, you know, that come out, and then it kind of ends up at this net result. I like to see it that way. And I, I, as I said, I can achieve that through uh, adding category groups to my categories. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do that. Like also, as I mentioned in that previous video, like the way you have your category sets up, set up is one of the primary ways that informs the way your report is going to look. And most specifically, that you know is in using both um, sub categories with subcategories and then I even do subcategories of those. So, you know, for example, I got living expenses which, you know, is under the category group personal expense. But under that I have my car expenses which you can see over here and my category list is a subcategory of that. And then under car expense I have the broken down components of that, you know. And then when I, the report shows up, as you can see, we have the living expenses, then under that a car expenses, and then under that the actual car expenses. And this allows me to see, to see a subtotal of car expense 
and then also a subtotal of total living expense, you know, and then a subtotal of everything that's in the category group. So, how do you do category groups? Well, it's, it's a little confusing, as I guess, I feel like I say that a lot, the quick and, and you know, no issues stop saying that, but um, I, as I do also always say, Quicken's pretty deep, so they have a lot of features in Quicken, and you know, I don't know, the user experience design doesn't suit everybody all the time. But um, the way you assign a category group to a category is down here. There's this options button, okay, and it has two things in there. It, called, it has assign category groups and manage categories. The manage categories option, honestly, is basically useless. Uh, it just gives you kind of another way to like add or remove categories from your category list, so I never use that. But the category groups is not useless. Um, so if you want to inform your reports to display in a certain way like I do, you're going to create category groups for the, for the main you know, subsections of um, what you want to display. Where you would create a category group is this button right here. Now, the funny thing is, is there will be some basic category groups that Quicken kind of puts in by default, and it's usually like personal expense and business expense. You can delete those and start adding in your own. And I use underscores to help, you know, determine what comes first and last. Like, I want business activity to come first, uh, but the reporting will basically sort your category groups alphabetically if you don't have uh, underscores. If it's sorted alphabetically, it won't always show up in the way that I want it to. So what I do is use underscores to force certain categories to be ahead of others. So that's one basic thing. Um, as I said, Quicken will have some default category groups and it will basically have put categories in its default category groups. So over here on the left, you can see what categories are in a particular category group. And most likely what you're gonna see is, you know, the three or four basic category groups that Quicken sets up by default. What you're gonna do is, you know, you're gonna basically, you know, bring up one of their basic category groups. Uh, mine, you know, it's kind of confusing because you know, what you're seeing here is the ones I've made, but first when you start this, you'll see the ones that Quicken has made here. You can basically select each one uh, individually. Then you want to create a name, a category group that you want it to be in. And then you're basically going to move all of the category groups from where they currently live into the one you want them to be in. Inevitably, what's going to happen is you should be taking out everything from the basic category groups that Quicken set up, moving them into your own, and then I just went ahead and I delete, you know, the basic groups that, you know, Quicken has set up. It's hard for me to illustrate this in this file because I've already deleted the basic category groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this file really quickly. I'm going to go into a, another tutorial file I have. Um, let's see. And I'm going to show you the default category groups that um, Quicken has set up. The reason I had to start in this file was because I needed to show you like an actual report using my own category groups. My tutorial file here has no transactions in it, so I can't actually show you a report with transactions. See, no transactions. But uh, if you can make this mental leap with me, we're going to go to the category list. This category list is the default category list that you know will come with any Quicken new file that you open. We're going to go to assign category groups, and we're going to see in here these are the basic category groups that um, Quicken comes up with. Now, we're going to make uh, a custom one called, uh, let's see, business 
activity. Okay, we'll make that one and we'll make uh, make another one called real estate activity and then we'll make personal activity. Now again I use underscores to force the order on things. Um, with only these three categories I don't really need any because they would be in the order I would want business person whatever. But if I were to add in like I don't know another one that alphabetically wouldn't work well I would use the underscores to force the order. Okay so their personal expenses um, are probably not that dissimilar, um, you know, from what yours are going to be. But because I call it personal activity, under the personal banner, I have both personal income and personal expense under one group. And they have it broken out. So I'm going to take all the personal expense. I'm going to click shift hold and I'm going to add that to personal activity. Then I'm going to take all the personal income and add that to personal activity. And now when I sort by that, that um, report by report group, income and expense for personal activity will all be in that window. You know? Now that may not be exactly the way you want to do it, but once you start playing around with this and see you know, how, the income, how the report gets reorganized based on your group, you'll go, oh, okay, I get it now. Well. Maybe I'll put this in there, put this in there, or maybe I, you know, want something other than business activity and personal activity, whatever it may be. Um, so now what I'm going to do is a similar thing. I'm going to take all the business expense and business income and add it to business activity. And there you go. And you can see here, um, you can, uh, in your category list, you can toggle that what stuff you see and what you don't you can have the group area turned on and now you can see what group a lot of stuff in is in now again how you have your your categories set up is going to directly affect your reporting so it really to get your report dialed in the way you know mine is it's a combination of both setting up your categories and subcategories in a certain way and then assigning those to a category group of your choice. Um, and, you know, to, I, I kind of masterminded my little system over the years of the way I like to see stuff because the goal here is to try to minimize the amount of time you spend, you know, in quick, in quick and in working on your finances. You know, at the beginning, it takes a little bit more time. I, you know, do it, would do it once a week and probably take me longer on the weekends, you know couple hours. Now I do it, you know, every other week and probably can get everything synced and updated in 30 minutes. And then I pull a report and it's the report is exactly the way I want to see it so that I can get a quick snapshot of where I'm at and I'm done. And honestly, sometimes I don't even think I update things maybe once a month sometimes now too. But if I wait that long, it takes longer because I got to download a bunch of transactions and all that jazz. Um, but anyway, that's category groups. I am going to go back over to my other file that actually has transactions in it just for uh, finalizing out this video. bring up that same report I had up before, which is organized by category groups. I'll bring up my categories again. And as you can see in here, you know, I have all my business expenses and my business income under the business activity category group. And because I have my business income as a hierarchy category, as like a top level category, and I have my business expense as a top level category, the way that translates under business income is that, under business activity, excuse me, is that I first see business income and a subtotal there, 
and then I see business expense, and then I see the net. Um, so there you go. And by the way, if you're like, wow, Joe, you, you spent a lot of business expense on your income, this report includes a W-2 paycheck that I gave to myself. Um, so in a sense, the net result of this is not exactly accurate. But like in practical terms, it's accurate mathematically, but that actually is, is a good little lead into further customizing your reports to potentially reflect, you know, kind of more of a cash flow um, style report versus a profit and loss style report. Sometimes you have, you know, money that leaves your business account, but ultimately as an expense through a payroll, but the net result of that payroll ends up right in your personal account and essentially even though it's seemingly you spent the money, you actually, it's just money that you've made and you know, you just sort of move from your business side to your personal side, if that makes any sense. So I have a few different reports uh, that I look at. Some that, you know, what I would call like a report for tech for my CPA, which like has every little detail and would show my, um, you know, my W-2 pay like in the business and then also show it as personal W-2 income on the personal. And then I have like my sort of practical reality report where I would take those two categories out from the view of the report, uh, which would show a more pr like practically correct report for me, you know, to look at versus my CPA who needs to know about the W-2 paycheck. Hopefully that sidebar made sense, but, um, that I'm going to use it as a lead into the next video, which will be customizing categories that are in reports and adding in and taking out and why you might do that. And also customizing which accounts you show in your reports and taking some off and putting some on and why or why you would not do that. Okay, more videos to come. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.